so these two kind of bigger ideas supported the idea of plate tectonics, but there are things that support these individual ideas, kind of evidence, right? Kind of general ideas, um, but then things that ideas that, that we, we use to support these bigger ideas, and then specific pieces of, inf of information, actual examples of evidence, right? So you're going to kind of be mapping it and showing the connections in your map. So I've put like, this is something, this file I'm going to email to you. I'm a little nervous about emailing it to you, and I'll tell you why. Because I think you're going to end up thinking that these are the only bubbles that you should have. Or that the bubbles should be arranged this way exactly. And that's not true. This is just kind of like starting something that then you're going to take over and you're going to have to add more of these bubbles and you're going to have to arrange them maybe a little bit differently. But all I'm going to do is show you one branch that would kind of be an idea. Okay, so here's the branch. We've got continental drift. One kind of evidence idea that supported it was that their rocks are similar. Um, and studies found that they're similar on, on two different continents where they would have been connected. So you might have the same type of rock on one continent that's on another continent where we thought they would be connected. That kind of makes sense, right? Then there's actual specific examples of that, right? So the Appalachians, similar to Greenland mountains, and that those are two areas that we thought would be connected. Or that the rocks on the eastern South American are similar to the western Africa. Okay, so those would be specific examples of a general idea that then supports the idea of continental drift. Making sense so far? So what you're going to have to do is find all of kind of the bigger ideas and for each of those, the little supporting pieces of evidence. And not just for continental drift. Now, I've only put three bubbles coming off of here, but you might need to add another one. And there might be more examples of these things that you want to include too, right? So don't get locked into my structure. This, not the top level and not the bottom level, but this middle level, I'm hoping that you will find a picture that you think really represents this idea, and you're going to include it there. So if I were uh, rocks and continental drift, and I were to do images, I might find something like this where I'm like, ooh, that really kind of shows some very specific things here showing or this one's look at this one that's kind of cool right it's really showing the similarities of the rock types so what I could do is I could view the image and I'm control clicking it I'm going to do copy image and I'm going to go over to inspiration and I've clicked on this escape clicked on this icon and then I'm going to do command V and it actually turns the icon into the picture. Now that might be a little bit big. Um, if the image itself is kind of big to start off with, you might end up with problems with inspiration not being able to deal with that much memory. If I paste it into a Word document, And I'm like, well, I don't need it to be that big. How big do I need it? And then I take it and I shrink it down to the size that I actually want it to be in inspiration. Then I can do a command shift four and screenshot just what I want. And then my screenshot ends up being the right size. So then I could go to my desktop, open up the screenshot, which will be smaller, and copy and paste it into inspiration. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. What happens in inspiration when people put a bunch of large images in there is that inspiration kind of tanks and then the next time you open your document there's just question marks where your images should be. It's definitely very, very, very frustrating. So you do not have to have images for the bottom level or the top level, just this middle level. Good image that kind of supports the idea. Do you need images for each middle level? Yes. Okay. Images for each middle level. So remember, you may have more middle levels or maybe you'll have less. Maybe you'll be like, oh, I only need to have two here or maybe you'll have three here, right? So don't get stuck on the 
the what I put in there. Now notice the direction of the arrows. Which direction are the arrows going? Angelina. Right, so it's kind of like the little pieces of evidence that support the bigger idea that support this. So it's going in the direction of support. Does that make sense? So kind of be careful with that. So the things I'm going to be looking at, and I do believe I have, there is a rubric on the topics page. If there isn't, I'm going to be making one that I'll put up there. But the things that I'm looking for are kind of like a logical order in terms of what's supporting what. So I'm looking at logic for sure. This is, has a lot to do with logic. I'm also looking for it to be clear and easy to follow, that it's not like either spread out too much um, or the arrows are crossing over each other and making it hard to, to see. And then I'm looking at you picking images that really represent the idea of what's going on, that really represent the idea of what's going on. We don't just have a picture of a tree and it doesn't really explain what the concept is that's encompassed in the bubble. Does that make sense? So those are the things I'm looking for, kind of organization of the information so it's easy to follow and see. I'm looking at the images really representing the concepts. And then I'm looking for logic so that, that the sequence of your bubbles is logical, that, it, that one thing really does support the next thing.